the basic out of the box. You start Revit. It's one of the default uh, files. Haven't made any changes to this, so no smoke and mirrors. If you want to try this when you get home, again, you've got the Unity Free Player. You've got Revit. Go for it. It's the exact same process. Go up to the application menu. Go down here and go to export. And pretty much just go to FBX and save that. Now, the nice thing is, if you're on the building design suite premium, where you get Revit as either you know, one box or just Revit, you also have a suite workflow. And you can modify the settings for this. But you can just say, you know what? Send it right to 3D Max. Again, it basically makes that FBX, sends it to Max, opens it up. And depending on which of these you choose, let me hop on one of these, you can tweak a couple of the settings in terms of lighting or materials. Either way, though, if I send the XBX from here to Max, that prepares me for, uh, to export to FBX from Max. Or if I just want to do a really quick test, I'll just say the export from Revit and send it straight in. From that point, I'm actually going to hop into Unity for a second. Unity will always open up. Get that clean. Unity is always going to open up with whatever the last project that you were in was. So and if you started off, you just installed Unity, it's going to open up with a, a test environment or a demo that's called Angry Robots. So it's a pretty neat environment, it has lighting, it has uh, shadows, it has water effects and rain, and again, things trying to kill you just like any normal game. So what I'm going to do is just say, new project. And the first thing it wants to know is, number one, where are you putting this new project? And then what do you need in this? So in all honesty, you can just start with nothing, because you can always add in these after the fact. If you start something, you're like, well, wait a minute, I forgot to put a character controller in, you know, something that allows me to actually move through the space. Again. All these things you can always add later on. So I'm just going to say I want to have a character controller. And let's see here, Skybox, which as Leo is going to talk in a couple of minutes about, is sort of like your surrounding or your background and environment. And if I wanted to have some standard apps, because I, I expect to use this on a mobile platform, I would choose that. So I'll just choose a few of these, say Create. This is going to close down. And what it's going to do is actually open up again with a brand new file with that in there in a minute. <laughs> there we go. So once this opens up, what I'm going to do is just go through the interface a little bit. It's going to look pretty different compared to most of the tools that we typically work with, so considering like Revit or Navisworks. However, a lot of the things are going to be relatively similar in terms of usage. So once this hops open, it's just importing the different assets that I checked the boxes for. Once this opens, you're going to have a main window, similar to Revit or anything else, that we're going to be working in. And that window is going to essentially have two sides to start with. One side is going to be a big 3D view that I can orbit around, and that allows me to manipulate and move my content around. And it's actually going to be tabbed. The tab is going to be the actual camera of the game interface. So if it's going to be set up for like a first person, that camera would be right there. So this is my interface. This is the scene view. So once I start to bring my model in, you know, I'll essentially see this you know, big building hanging out there. And then when I go to game, it'll actually be the camera that I make. That this is when I, when I show this to a client. This is how I want them to be seeing it from. So do I want this to be a camera that follows a track or a camera that they can move wherever? You know, is it closed? Is it far out? This depends on what I want this to be. And like Leo mentioned before for the Need for Speed game, I can always change that camera. So let's say I want to go in tight for a first person through the building. But then when I want to get outside, I want to go really far up. And I don't want to have somebody have to move there. So I can actually key, uh, set that up for a key. Outside of that, I have controls on how I manipulate that view. So I can say whether or not I want this to actually be a wireframe view, texture. If I'm trying to make sure that everything looks correct for my lighting, I can go back and forth with this. There we go. And you have your typical toolbars and pull downs. You've got your hierarchy here, and you've got your project. Hierarchy is essentially all the content that is actually in the scene. And when I keep saying scene, think of that as your design option. So if you're looking at it from a video game standpoint, it's a level. So you beat level one, now you're going to level two. Well, if you're showing a client, maybe you want to show them, okay, this is what it looks like with you know, the, the, uh, the building looking like an L shape. Now, if you want to look at a different scheme, I can tell it to finish that one, load the next one, and I can start looking at different iterations. So I've actually met a few clients that have actually used this. And what they do is they use this to present to town boards. So you need to go to places and show them, this is what it's going to look like. Really, you're not going to see it from your front door. It's going to look nice. There's going to be trees there. And, if, and we're still looking at different options. So this one's over here, this one's over there, but it actually still works. 
You can animate cars on it, which we're actually going to show as well. So if you're trying to show what traffic patterns might look like, all of it can actually be done through here. So again, the hierarchy, that's everything that's actually in here. Right now, it's only the main camera. If I look over in project, that's my assets. So Leo mentioned that before. Assets are all the things that are actually in my file or in my project. So if you're looking at this from a Revit standpoint, if you load in a door family that has 15 different types, all of those different types and that door family are in your project, just like this. So I can drag them literally from the right side to the left side. And that's essentially what I'm going to end up doing here. Then you have your inspector, which, like Leo mentioned again, it's like Revit. This is your properties. When I clicked on that main camera, this showed me all the properties and settings for that main camera. Click on the background, it goes away. So certain things might look different, but the reality is if you're using Revit, Civil 3D, Autodesk Infrastructure Modeler, you're going to find a lot of different facets of this tool that are similar enough that you'll have a certain level of comfort. So what I'm actually going to do now is go to location where I have that FBX file, and I'm literally just going to drag and drop this in. So put that under my project. That'll load that in, translate that. Now I've got my house. That house has all of the things inside of here. I wonder if I actually brought in the right house. Oh, no, I brought in a different house, but still FBX. You can bring another one. Yeah. So it means that you can bring in assets from SketchUp if you want to enhance your, uh, your scene. You can bring in assets from 3 Studio Max. You can bring in assets mm -hmm. from Revit, like he's yeah. trying to do. And if you also notice on the bottom right-hand corner, I'm pre I can preview it before I actually put it in the model to make sure I get the right one, which I still got the wrong one. Hmm? There we go. Okay. There you go. No, really, I did this. <laughs> <laughs> so once I have this, I can either drag and drop it into the hierarchy, or I can literally drag and drop it up there. Either way works. So that brings that in there, and it's really far away. Okay, no big deal. Double click on it here, and it zooms it right in. And I can zoom in, look around. Now, what you're seeing here is most of the materials that were mapped on this are gone. And the reason for that is after Revit 2010, so actually just in general, 2010, Autodesk modified their FBX file format a little bit. So kind of like it's still DWG from year to year, but every three years they tweak it. If I look at Max and I have that file actually open, all you need to do, you're not doing a lot of work in Max unless you really want to. I just come up here, go to Export, Export, File Formats, FBX, choose something. Hopefully you spell it correctly. And you have this dialog window. This allows you to tweak different settings. If you export to FBX from Revit, you just say, here's the name, and you're done. That's really it. When you're inside here, I look at the Include dialog window. I can say Bake Animation if you've actually created animations inside of 3D Max. So more than likely, when you're first starting, you're not going to worry about that. The thing that actually is really important, though, is if I come down here and look at Embed Media, I need that checked. That takes all the materials and maps that you actually have in Revit. If I look at Revit over here, everything's really kind of you know, solid. You can see sort of like a typical 2D hatch pattern on the surface. But when you start looking at things in Ray Trace, or if you look at it in Realistic, there actually are real materials on there. And Autodesk every year has been trying to make things more consistent between their programs. So if I've dialed in my materials in Revit, I send it to Max, they're already there. Max has that ability to sort of embed everything and make it accessible. It's, it's already there when I go to Max. Just nobody else outside of an Autodesk program can really see it or access that information. So that's actually the key thing in here to send that out, bring that in here, and then I can see everything. And hopefully not break anything in the process. <coughs> cool. Cool. Now, in this case, I look at that roof and it's blank. I'd like to have something on there. So what I can actually do is come in here, and I have some shingles. Literally just drag that, drop that, and put this in here, and I now have my roofing shingles. So I'll come over there, double click on the roof, I can drag and drop that onto the roof, and then I can actually start to modify that material. I can make it bigger, make it smaller, tweak how that's actually looking. There we go. Uh, there we go. Okay, and it helps if I actually pick the one that I intended to work with. There we go. So let me select the texture that I did bring in. And again, what you'll notice in a lot of these areas, you have these little windows here, here, 
and up here, you can search. So as this project gets bigger, you develop it, you're doing maybe a campus plan, you've got 15 different buildings on there and you're trying to find the one thing that you knew where it was in Revit, where it is in here, I can actually start typing and looking for that. So if I'm up here inside my assets, I say it's roofing. Oh, there it is. That made life a lot easier. So I can just click on that and now that'll show up. I tweak the color so it's no longer white. And now I can modify that and actually see what this looks like. And I can change the scale and everything else. So outside of that, I can always come in here and start making folders to help me with my organization. But if I ever lose anything, I can very easily come in, search for it, and I've got it.